Hey guys, welcome to my second Moving Forward Friday. This is April McLam. I am the founder and therapist for Under the Broom Tree. We are a mental health counseling service and we specialize working with people who have experienced trauma, depression, anxiety, and faith confusion. Um, I'm here in front of a parking lot because full disclosure, my husband locked his keys in the car. So I'm sitting here waiting for the tow truck. So I thought it would a good, be a good time while I wait to hop on here and talk to you a little bit about a quote that I ran across last night by Nikki Giovanni. Basically the quote said, and I can't remember verbatim, she was saying that mistakes are inevitable, but what you do afterwards to correct the error is what counts. And it, resonates with me for what I was thinking about the last time that I posted a Moving Forward Friday post. And what I like about Moving Forward Friday is it, it's a time for us and for myself to reflect on how can we keep going in spite of whatever may be going on. And I was thinking about a time in my life, specifically in my younger days, about what I did to move forward. And um, I'm thinking about a time when I was around 18 years old. Um, not a whole lot of people know this about me, or, but my first year of college, I spent it at Johnson C. Smith University, but I'm truly an alumni for Albany State University. I only spent three years at Albany State. Um, and if you looked at my resume, you think, oh, she graduated in three years. No, I transferred. Um, I graduated in 2001. I went to Johnson C. Smith University for a full year, and um, I don't really talk to a whole lot of people about what happened at that time, but, you know, I'm 37 years old now, and it was a really, really long time ago, and praise God that I am healed from those situations that I went through at 18, but when I think back on some of the mistakes that I made, um, one of the things was following up with what God wanted me to do you know throughout high school you know I was very active in my church I had a very heavy prayer life um, we went to church three times a week sometimes more my dad and my mom were a part of a lot of the ministries at my church and so when I went away to college the first thing on my mind was to find a church home because that's what I was so used to having that church family that camaraderie and that first year was very difficult but um you know I dealt with a lot of the things that most young adults deal with when they first go to college premarital sex relationships body issues self-esteem and um staying true to what i believed in and keeping my values um intact and it was difficult it was hard because it was the first time in my life that i was away from my parents and i got to decide what i did for my life how my day was going to be who i interacted with how long i stayed out what I did, what 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 do I do? And um, you know, the first couple of first semester, you know, I was just intrigued by everything that I was seeing because Johnson C. Smith University, which is in Charlotte, North Carolina, is a historically black college and university and I was introduced to all types of people at that school. Um there were like groups of people that were from different geographic locations. There were people that were from Georgia, like me. There are people from DC, Maryland, New York. Um, one of my very good friends to this day, she's from Boston. She lived across the way from me in a dorm. And um, I was introduced to another thought process and how people live because all I knew from at that point was, you know, how you got down as a, as a black person in Georgia, but you know, black people, which I love about us, we're multifaceted. We have different ideas, we flow differently, we, li we live differently, and all of that matters in the location that you live 
especially as a kid, you know, what I thought about school was different than how people thought about school that were from Massachusetts and DC. Um, what I thought about how life and music and dance and all of those things were different. So I'm saying all that to say, um, with me being intrigued and introduced to different thought processes, mistakes were made my freshman year. Um, I gained the freshman 100. You know, I know if you hear about the freshman 15 where you gain those first 15 pounds because of either you're homesick or you stress, um, not realizing at the time that I was going through traumatic situations, um, I gained the freshman 100. Um, at an early age, I learned early on that I was emotionally eating, helping me get through college and helping me get through um, relationship issues and challenges that I was having at that time. Um, one thing that I did do that I that I mistaked and it, it really took me a long time to forgive myself for was I forgot what I had promised myself. I forgot what I had promised God. I forgot about staying chaste. Um, not giving myself before I got married and I did it anyway um, I wouldn't say it was peer pressure at the time I thought it was just like well I, I love this person um, I might as well anyway we gonna get married anyway not knowing that you know that's not the deal you know you get married and then you consummate you don't consummate then you get married did it totally wrong and I struggled with that for a long time so much so that I tried to introduce that idea to my partner at the time and they weren't with it but and so I decided to end it and and then a tumultuous turn of events happened um, that led me to gain the freshman 100 surprisingly enough I remained on the honor roll um, the relationship ended really badly and um, I was left alone lonely a lot but what I would say from the error of that mistake was um, God is a good God what I wish I had known back at 18 was even though that I had made those mistakes when it came to honoring myself and honoring my vessel that God still loved me at the time I didn't know that um, I kept stuffing my face with food. Um, I kept being isolated and not making friends. And a lot of the second semester of my freshman year in college, um, I spent watching everybody else have fun and enjoying the fruits of, um, being in college and having a social life. And all I really focused on was just passing school. And so, there were days, I mean days I spent, I was always in the library, I was in my room, or when I couldn't sleep at night, I was in the drive through That was my life um, until I met um, my friend, and she um, started pulling me out of that funk that I was in about the decisions that I made, about feeling heartbroken about the love that was lost between me and my and my partner at the time and you know she was really there to help and she necessarily didn't believe in what I believed in she was Catholic and I was you know raised up to be in the Baptist church and but what I loved about my relationship with her was she didn't judge me she didn't say that well your religion is wrong if you know that this is what you want to practice, then there is nothing wrong with honoring yourself for that. And so even in her 18-year-old wisdom, she was able to tell me, you made the mistake. This is what it is. But that doesn't mean that you stop living because this has been done. If you, if your God, if, this is how she would talk to me. If your God loves you and cares for you unconditionally, then you need to repent, deal with that, and keep it moving. And that's what I did. Later on, I ended up transferring to Albany State University because of all of the situations that I had went through emotionally and socially. And 
honestly, my dad and my mom didn't want to continue to pay Johnson C. Smith because I thought I was going to get into the Honors College and they didn't get in and all that other kind of stuff. But um, I ended up getting the opportunity to go to Albany State University which is where I ended up graduating from. And I graduated in four years. I was really determined about that. I did not want to be a five-year college grad. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I was really scared that Albany State wasn't going to take all my credit. So I started off at Albany State in a freshman dorm with this new class, this new class that was class of 2002. And a lot of times people thought that I was part of that class, but I was really a year ahead. I just, I had to start the journey over again, in a sense, at a new college. So um, what I can take away from the mistakes that I made was I shouldn't have spent so much time in doubting God and being in self-pity. Um, some of that carried over even when I went to Albany State, feeling sorry for myself that I didn't get to finish and graduate and be with my class at Johnson C. Smith University. Um, but what I learned from it, even though I made those errors, I continued to strive to do what I needed to do, and that was become a college graduate. That was to become um, a professional in my field and and still maintain the grades that I prided myself on. Um, when I went to Albany State University, I thrived. I was a part of a first year experience cl um, cl tutoring club and who would have thought that because my first year of college was terrible. Um, I ended up being a part of a group of people who tutored folks who were in that freshman sophomore program um, I ended up gaining mentors in the, um, the legal affairs department. Shout out to Mrs. Kimbrough. She was my mentor throughout the duration of my last couple of years of college. I joined the illustrious and glorious Gamma Sigma chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I was a part of the ASU anointed gospel choir. Um, and um, I became a resident assistant for about two or three years, I believe. And, um, you know, the trajectory of my life changed. You know, my first year did not end the way that it started. I graduated on time. I became a part of some great clubs. And um, if you listen to my first video, I ended up um, going into my dream, and that was to law school. So your beginning, your mistakes doesn't have to define what you're doing and how it ends up for you. When you meet with me in my counseling sessions, me partnering with you, with you is about understanding what that journey means for you and how the rest of it goes because you may come to see me after you've made a mistake or somebody else made a mistake on your life and you had no control over it but that doesn't mean that what has happened to you has to tell the rest of your story it doesn't have to season the rest of your journey it didn't for me so why should it for you? I encourage you today. It is a beautiful day here in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I don't know if you follow me, but if you do, I am on Instagram, I am on LinkedIn, and I am on Facebook. You'll find me under the guise of Under the Broom Tree LLC on Instagram. You can find me on www.underthebroomtree.com. That is my website. And you can also find Under the Broom Tree LLC on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. Um, if you want to contact me, let me know if you want to start services. I am seeing clients in the state of Alaska, Oregon, New Jersey, and now North Carolina. I can see you through telehealth. And since we're living in the stages of the COVID-19 recovery, um, I am willing to see you just like this. You can meet me on your porch, in your bedroom, 
at your kitchen table or even outside and we can talk. We can talk you through this journey. I wish you guys a great weekend. Peace.